Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Today I'll be showing you how I painted these three mountain sunsets in watercolor. So grab your brushes and follow along. For a complete list of my supplies used for this project, just see the description below this video. The paper I'm using today is Saunders Waterford 140 pound cold pressed paper, size nine by 12 inches. My brushes are Princeton Neptune, size 8 and 12 round brushes, and I have a half inch oval wash. For my paints today, I'm using a Sennelier set of 48 pan watercolors. This is kind of an expensive set, but it's well worth it. The colors are made with honey, and they are absolutely beautiful, so vibrant, and light fast. I've already taped around the border, and I've placed two strips in the middle to create three separate paintings. I also have clean water, paper towel, and a spray bottle. For the first painting, I'm going to wet the entire area so that the paper is glossy but not sopping. With my size 12 brush, I'm mixing up some cerulean blue and using a side to side motion. I start at the top and do a blue gradient about halfway down, evening out the bottom with clean water. I take some yellow and do the same thing starting from the bottom and working my way up about a third of the way up. For the sweeping red clouds in the middle, I'm using a mixture of French Vermilion and Sennelier Orange. The paper is still wet, so my edges will be soft. To darken the blue sky at the top, I use a mixture of Cerulean and Cobalt Deep. Always be sure to rinse your brush before using a different color to keep the colors pure and vibrant. For the second painting, I'll wet the entire area again, just like the first one. This one will be the moody, misty purple mountains. I do the sky first with an orangey red. Use that same wet into wet, side to side gradient technique. Use cerulean to paint a light base layer where the mountains will go, more vibrant and darker in value towards the foreground. I'm going to let that one dry and begin the third painting. Once again, I start by wetting the paper. This guy will be our darkest one with a mixture of indigo and dioxazine purple. Again, paint a gradient from dark to light, a little over halfway down. I'm switching to my number eight round brush, which is slightly smaller. I'm using a bright yellow. Saunders Yellow Deep is what I'm using for these beautiful, fluffy streaks of yellow clouds. The paint should be thick, not too much water. This will keep the color vibrant and pure. While the yellow is still damp, Paint the darker clouds around it using indigo, cobalt deep, and dioxazine purple. You may need to experiment with different mixture ratios to get the color you want. Use a red to add some more sunset colors, carefully painting around your yellow. The edges of the yellow clouds are blooming a little as they meet the blue, creating a soft cloud edge. While the paint is still wet, you can use a clean, damp brush to pull color back out. I'm painting slower and more carefully here, but you can always paint more quickly to create a looser look. Take some ultramarine and purple to make the dark cloud at the top. Some more light red. Blend the top of the cloud to soften the edge. Darken the clouds a little more. It's time to add a second dark wash to the sky 
again using indigo and dioxazine purple. I use a more blue mixture towards the bottom. Add a light wash of cerulean blue at the bottom, but most of this will be covered by the mountains. Returning to our first painting, I'm adding some red streaky clouds to the bottom and a little bit of purple and yellow. For the second painting, cobalt violet light hue and permanent magenta are perfect colors for the mountains. I start with a really light mountain in the horizon, careful to leave some of my blue showing. Then I add a darker mountain line, blending it with purple and ultramarine. I have to work quickly while the paint is still wet so the colors will blend. The third layer of mountains is even darker. I'm still using my size 8 round brush. The foreground is the darkest. If you really want to create depth in your paintings, just remember that the further an object is away, the lighter it will be, and the closer it is to you, the darker it will be. So the foreground is a mixture of purple and indigo. I'm just going to add one more layer of red at the top of the sky, and this one is finished. The last step is to add the mountain silhouettes to the first and third paintings. I'm using a color called Neutral Tint, and it works really nicely for these silhouettes. Make your shapes unique and interesting. <laughs> One sunset painting is great, but three side by side is even better. In the end, this took me about 45 minutes to do this entire project, and it was so much fun to do. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. I'll be posting videos every week. So thanks for watching.